Hey bitch, and welcome back to another equestrian trash. Now I know a lot of people out there don't like me, but one thing that you can't say about me is that I don't keep my word. Just as a holistic horse care professional trying to find how we were harming horses and what worked and what didn't work. A holistic horse care professional. This is just so, oh my God, my head hurts. My head hurts. I'm gonna go on Amazon and buy her book though, by the way. I meant it, bitch. <laughs> this was so much more than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was gonna be just a vegan spreading a bunch of bullshit about equestrians with no validity to back her arguments. Oh my God, it is so much better than that. <laughs> For context, if you haven't seen my crazy vegan versus equestrian video, go watch it. I am also vegan, so for any vegans who are clicking on this video, you should probably know that I'm also a vegan and an equestrian. That's a thing. Thank you, Ren. Thank you so, so, so much for making equestrians look like abusive pieces of shit, like what you are. Equestrians are not like Ren. Ren is one of the worst and most abusive equestrians I have literally ever read about. In today's equestrian trash, we're obviously talking about Ren Hurst's book, called Writing on the Power of Others. This is a book that so many vegans like to reference when they talk about why horseback riding is wrong. A book by Ren Hurst is something that I would recommend that you read or go to her YouTube channel. She understands horses. She used to ride them and she never will again. It's such a fucking shame that we had to kill a tree to make these books. I have read and reread and reread this book just to make sure, just to make sure. Oh, and I made notes too. All of this, you know, all of this, not a single shred of scientific information or argument or study to back any of these claims. After reading this book, Renhurst is not an equestrian. She's not a horseback rider. She's an animal abuser. So fuck out of here with all of these vegans referencing this book as to why equestrianism is so bad. Equestrians are against this. So let's talk about it. It says on the back, Hearst's honest and vulnerable testimony of her astonishing journey offers a surprising avenue to true power, unconditional love, and joyful authenticity. A tree died for this. Ren Hearst finds her way to horses as a teenager, following a turbulent and painful childhood. They are her saving grace, her first experience of pure joy and freedom. She soon becomes a passionate horsewoman. I can't read this, I can't. After, it's like, honestly, night and day. What's on the back of this book versus what's inside this book, no, 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 no. She never finds happiness. Throughout the entire book, she never finds happiness. She's in a constant state of turmoil. She constantly is self-sabotaging. She's constantly abusing animals. And then at the end, she's like, Oh, I abused animals my entire life and it's wrong, so I'm vegan. That's the most accurate summary I can think of for this book, and I'm not exaggerating. Go buy the book if you don't believe me. Swear to God, this book is just someone's admission of guilt for animal abuse and cruelty. First of all, this book is only 172 pages, and this bitch has 20 chapters. Fancy my pain. Kick until you win. Horsemanship isn't natural. Equine science, in quotation marks. Man, she really hates the word science. The death card. God, so dramatic. Oh my god. Power and responsibility. She struggles so much with power. It's brought up so much throughout this book. She constantly talks about equestrians as being these power-hungry douchebags who only want to ride horses to have a sense of power and control over something. You were riding horses to gain power. 
you were riding horses to be a dominating figure and dominate an animal and abuse an animal. Other people don't ride horses for those reasons. She projects her own emotions onto other people and actions onto other people, and she thinks that, oh, just because I abused horses, everybody else must be abusing horses too, so it's bad. Now, I paid $19 for this book, which is $19 more than I would have liked to have paid. Now, in the very beginning chapters of this book, swear to God, every other page she talks about abusing horses. Wren was handed horses as a child. Nobody taught her how to ride. Nobody taught her how to train. Nobody taught, in fact, nobody taught her how to ride or train throughout this entire book. Wren likes to play off her abuse in her childhood as a reason as to why she abused horses and was just a terrible fucking person. I mean, she literally even got into fights with other children. I'd fight boys until they had bloody noses. That's not something that normal people do, Ren. I can speak from personal experience and granted everybody handles abuse differently, but I was very abused as a child. I've spoke out a lot about this on my channel, which is why I'm an animal activist to this day. That's not an excuse. Let me just read you some quotes of what Ren admits to doing to animals. I walked right up to him and punched him hard right in the face. I must have hurt her in more ways than I can ever care to remember, considering how very little I knew back then. Yeah, a lack of knowledge is not an excuse for animal abuse. I will give you a pass or two, but after a certain point, you know you're abusing an animal, just based off of the animal's reaction alone. It hurt too much to stand up. This is after her horse dumped her because she used to do really stupid shit like just gallop her horses around in open fields as a kid. And not only would she gallop them, but she adamantly talks about vigorously kicking horses in the stomach until, quote, her legs turned to jelly. Yeah, no wonder your fucking horses threw you off, Ren. Sobbing heavily, I picked up rocks and threw them at her and yelled at her to go away. That's the second time that happened. And while a part of me died each time, there was a part that enjoyed it. He mistook me for one of the other horses and kicked me hard. I was completely unprepared for it. He nailed me right in the leg. And of course, at that time, my answer for such a situation was to pay him back with the same kind of energy. So I kicked him at least three times as as hard as I could. I held on, I pulled his head sideways, and I rode that big monster until he stopped. Referring to any animal, even in a past tense of big monster, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, no wonder you have such a skewed perception of reality. Equestrians don't view horses as big monsters. <laughs> My favorite quote, I became absolutely disgusted with my behavior on more than one occasion. Oh, trust me, we all are disgusted with your behavior. Literally beat her in the face with them until she submitted and did what I asked. Ren, 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 Ren. This is not normal behavior for any human being. Yes, there are bad horse trainers and bad equestrians all over the place. However, they're far and few. The vast majority of equestrians do try to be as good as possible to their animals. They don't treat their animals like this. And for you to normalize this behavior as something that all equestrians do is such bullshit. That's like saying that every person who owns a dog beats their dog as a training method. She constantly references being a great horse trainer. Like she literally talks about how she is such a great horse trainer and was able to train every horse she came in, in contact with. What you consider to be horse training is not horse training. And she also references at every single point throughout this story, even the end, that she's incredibly self-destructive and constantly ruins every relationship or situation she gets herself into. Not only did she abuse animals, 
animals, which she admits to, she also constantly viewed horses as expendable. She constantly bought horses and sold them. And not only that, but she irresponsibly sold them. She never received any actual horse training. So she would literally just beat horses into submission and then resell them for a one or two thousand dollar profit. And these were supposedly, according to her, hundreds of horses, which is a scary thought that those horses are probably still out there and maybe killing people with a lack of training. She even talks about how so many people would reach back out to her after selling them the horses and would want refunds because the horses were absolute dog shit. Ren also is incredibly mentally unstable and doesn't know how to control her emotions, probably from a lot of the fucked up shit that happened to her. And I'm not negating that. I do think she went through shit, but that's not an excuse, again, to abuse animals. Go to therapy. She never once talks about going to therapy or getting actual mental health. I'm seriously concerned about the fact that she's still working with horses to this day. If you're gonna put out a book like this and basically normalize the abuse you've caused animals, then you should maybe put in here, hey, if you're also like this, go to therapy and get mental health counseling. Midway through the book, she gets into natural horsemanship, which she's completely wrong about. Nothing in this book is what I would consider natural horsemanship, apart from the very end where she rides horses bareback and bridleless. None of your training, Ren, none of your training in this is natural horsemanship. I'm not kidding, guys. This is seriously concerning shit in here. The way she talks about handling animals. No wonder that vegan teacher hates equestrians. That's all I'm gonna say. She also references multiple times throughout this book, bits, whips, and spurs but she never once has any scientific information to back it up. I don't like bits, I don't like whips, I don't like spurs. There's reasonings behind why I don't like them, but I actually have studies that back up how they affect horses, the damage they cause. She doesn't. She just says, oh, they're bad because I think they're bad because I used to stab my horses with spurs in the ribs. Ren, after leaving jobs, decided to finally, decades later, spend some quality time with horses without actually riding them. We cleaned their pasture every day and talked to them. It was the first time, the first fucking time I had ever spent time with my horses in this way, just caring for them with no agenda. It was so strange to go from being in the saddle every single day to not climbing on a horse's back for nearly a year. It's hilarious to me that she thinks that because she didn't spend any quality time with her horses, she thinks that every equestrian is like that. Most equestrians spend time with their horses outside of riding. Yet no wonder you think horseback riding is exploitation because that's all you did. And then later on, it's hilarious because she talks about how she finally tried bareback and bridleless riding and it worked and she had a good partnership with her horses. But then somehow down the road, she, you know, heard a few other people's opinions after watching Path of the Horse. And I like this documentary. I think this documentary documentary is really well done. I think every equestrian should watch this to build a better relationship with their horses, but there are scientific studies to back ethical riding. People being able to ride horses without their horses being in pain, without causing them pain. I do firmly believe that if you are able to develop a connection and a bond with an animal, you will be able to determine if they want to be ridden or not. My horse knows that if he shows me clear signs that he doesn't want to be ridden, I'm not going to force him to be ridden. Matter of fact, there's many days where I go out there where he's very blatant about not wanting to be ridden, and so I don't ride him. And so the fact that she goes on and on in this book about how every single bareback and bridalist person who's ever out there, those horses don't actually want to be ridden. They're just going along with it because they have to. No, Ren. And one of my favorite things that she says towards the end is, look at what is really going on and ask yourself why you're doing this. Because she's basically saying throughout that entire chapter that equestrians only ride horses for their own benefit. Okay, let me, let me just elaborate on this. Of course I like riding horses. However, my horse gets ridden whether I'm there or not by my exercise rider or by myself. It's because horses roam 30 to 40 miles a day in the wild. It's completely unfair to leave a horse locked up in a stall paddock or pasture 
all day. They will not get the same exercise or stimulation as they would if they were actually being ridden and exercised to the extent that they need to be traveling like what they would in the wild. And that's why so many horses in captivity develop early arthritis and have joint problems. It's because people like you leave your horses locked up in pastures or stalls or paddocks and then they don't get enough exercise. Do you think that I get something out of my exercise rider going out and riding Link? No. Another thing she talks about when referencing that equestrians are uh, basically the equivalent to slave owners, she says equestrians and the equestrian community treat horses the same way that orcas are treated in the film Blackfish. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the 2013 film Blackfish, it basically talks about orcas living in captivity in SeaWorld. I love that documentary. It's very good. I think that orcas should not be in captivity. I think it's really fucked up because they're basically living in a bathtub. And she literally references in here, I spent the entire film shaking my head saying, how is this different from what we do to horses? Horses kill people every single day in response to the pain we inflict upon them. No, they don't. Where's that statistic at? I wish everyone knew the lifespan of a domesticated horse compared to that of a healthy wild one as the film made clear for orcas. Okay, so let's talk about this. Orcas in captivity live 25 to 30 years versus in the wild up to 90 years. That is a dramatic difference. The max amount of time that horses live in the wild is the same amount of time that horses are known to live in captivity. <sighs> Let me take a breath. Let me just read you what this says. When I was very young, I was placed in very damaging sexual situations by an older and trusted family member. Did I resist? No. Was I granting permission? It very likely could have been perceived that way because I went along willingly. No, you didn't, Ren. That's the thing that you're getting. Children can't consent. And she's trying to say that horses can't consent. She literally compares sexual abuse to riding horses. I'm not even kidding. When a young woman says yes before she is ready, is she really okay with it? Don't compare riding horses to rape. Are you serious? Oh my God, Ren. Let's just assume for the sake of an argument that animal communication is possible and that these horses had really granted permission or admitted to enjoying being ridden. If I asked a child to make a decision such as I when presented with a harmful sexual encounter, would it really be responsible of me to assume that the child knew what was best for them? Are you serious, Ren? Are you serious? She's literally comparing riding horses to sexual abuse. The horse does not benefit from my being atop his back and I put him at great risk of harm when it's done with total mastery, which is rare. Yeah, again, she's saying that equestrians put horses at a great risk of harm every time they ride them, unless done perfectly, which is just not true. Let's go to her other ridiculous claim of saying that horses can't consent like children can't consent. Because you wanna compare children to animals, which I think is absolutely abhorred. People are still legally allowed to let their kids do sports, which put them at a great risk of injury. They're still allowed to put their kids in cars, which you have a very likely chance of dying in a car or in a car wreck. Adults are still allowed to make decisions that might put their kids at harm's way. They're not allowed to abuse their kids, just like equestrians are not allowed to abuse their horses, which you did, mind you. You did abuse horses. I totally agree that horses cannot consent to things, but this is why we have scientific studies that are conducted. How can we limit the amount of pressure that we apply to the horse's back? How can we improve our riding so that way horses are basically unaffected by us sitting on them? How can we better communicate with our animals so we know what they want or if they want to be ridden or if they don't? Everyone has a different perception of reality. Every species views things differently, has a different level of intelligence, sees things and understands things differently. Differently. What could be hard to me might be soft to something like an elephant who could easily break that thing. What could be soft to me, like this jacket, might be hard to something that's microscopic like bacteria or an ant. When vegans are out here projecting their own feelings and emotions onto animals by saying they don't like that, with no scientific backing or understanding, then you're just simply pulling shit out of thin air 
to validate your own argument. Are there bad equestrians out there? Absolutely, which is the entire purpose of my channel. However, you are one of those bad equestrians. You were a terrible equestrian. It honestly scares me that not once did you reference actually getting mental health or counseling, and yet you still have horses to this day, even though you claim you've changed. She can have whatever opinion she wants, but I just wanted to make this video to let people know that equestrians are not like Ren Hurst. And for any vegans out there who want to reference equestrianism to that book, just know that even equestrians think that she's abusive. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this equestrian trash. I know it was different from my other equestrian trash videos, but I just had to come out with this one because honestly, fuck her. Massive thanks to Coldest Water for sponsoring this video. I literally am just gonna go pass out and die in a corner because I can't and I'm gonna have a heart attack. I might even just kill myself because I just... Also, this is my newest design. It's dropping November 1st on Chop Raleigh Link. Keep it 20. You guys know me. So be sure to check out all those links down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.